let's dive a little bit deeper into life panels, the pan, the wood fiber panels that you all are selling. So they're composed of, as, as the name suggests, fib- fibers of wood compressed mm-hmm. together with a mm-hmm. small amount of adhesives. They are non-toxic. They don't have mm-hmm. any, give off any VOCs or anything. And they're very versatile too. Like you said, they can be used on the outside of walls. They can be used on roofs too. And they you, you can have a more fibrous, softer version that can be used in in bays and stud bays yeah and what are the other advantages of uh wood fiber panels yeah that's that's a great question that i feel like i've got fairly good at breaking it down so the the first one that i always say is that it saves you energy unlike other insulation and that's to do with what how it's made and the I suppose the scientific characteristics of the material, but it saves you energy. So it will delay the sun's heat and how long that heat takes to transfer through your roof or your wall. Then it's a great insulation. So let's oh, let's focus on that. The the delay of heat. How is that mm-hmm. different than EPS or the foil faced insulation that you mentioned earlier? So generally, I, I would have highlighted generally there's four key criteria of an insulation. You've got the density. And the higher the density, the better. So typically a synthetic fiberglass insulation or a polyester insulation would sit at maybe 10 or 20 kilograms per meter cubed. And the the infill that goes into the bays or the stud spacings, that starts at 60 kilograms a meter cubed for wood fiber. And then the rigid panel that you've got there on your desk, that starts at between 140 kilograms to 180 kilograms of density. And I've got a whole chart that shows these, you know, in a bar chart form. So it's actually easy to, to understand how different that is. And, it, you know, it's astronomical, the, di- the difference between a 10 kilogram and a 20 so kilogram. Fiber. I have a question about that. When I've been, in, when I install um, mineral wool insulation, one of the, instruction by the manufacturers is not to overfill it and not to compress it because that can reduce its um, nominal or its effective R value. And that's because the, the wool, the mineral wool insulation acts as an insulator by trapping air in between the fibers. Mm. So when you talk about density, that means more mass in a given area, does that equate to less trapped air? Uh, It depends it's, and that's a great point to raise. So that does depend, actually. But because it's wood fibre and that it's very, very low conductivity, like 0.036 uh, watts per metre Kelvin versus typically on the, the mineral walls, you're probably at 0.045. And I know that only sounds like a small difference, but, but that it does adds make, up, yeah. Yeah, it does add up, yeah. Um, so it's so because the material the itself is different. That's why we cannot use the same logic as we would uh, yeah. mineral wool insulation. Yeah, and also you get when then when you're moving into the science of air, air is as you know highly conductive. So even though it's insulated, and you've got more air pockets in the mineral, and obviously like I say not to compress it, so it reduces that with wood fiber because of the density of it being so dense the low thermal conductivity that will actually delay and work works with the specific heat storage capacity of the material to delay the time lag so in terms of a thermal resistance they're all fairly good and i, and I, do, I am quite fair to say that that you know that that is a good trait of insulation but then it's the other components too yeah so how is it better than foil faced insulation for roofs uh, because foils are not vapor permeable and that's one of the, so that's one of the four. So the first one is the density. Second one is thermal conductivity. And the third one would be specific heat storage capacity. So the ability of the material to absorb heat. Um, and again, a wood fiber versus a foil or the foams, they've barely got any ability to do that. Um, yeah. Just the, the makeup of it. And there's a whole heap of scientific formulation that you can use. And I do back this up with science because somebody said to me recently, oh, you know, would you say that you're biased towards wood fibre? And I said, yes, I am biased towards wood fibre, but not because 
I'm, I don't like synthetics and I only like wood. I'm biased because I believe in the science and the facts and the science and the facts prove and demonstrate that wood fiber is already, you know, a hundred steps ahead of the yeah. competition. So why do you think it, one, sorry, continue with your last I, point. I was just going to say the last one to answer your question about the foil face on the roof is the vapor permeability of it. So the ability to allow moisture vapor to escape without getting trapped in the roof or the wall system. And here we've got a whole heap of issues with mold, bacteria, condensation, and ultimately dry rot, which I'm sure you've probably come across on a few projects. So when you say here, you mean Australia or your your home? Uh, everywhere, Australia, okay. yeah. yeah. And you actually see it in the UK as well. That, that was a big... A big um, and that's because pandemic, moisture like. just cannot escape. Oh, that's a good point because during the pandemic, people are working from home. Kids are also studying from home. Someone else told me there was there. There's a massive buildup of moisture from cooking, mm. from exhaling, from just mm. being in our home 24 hours a day. Um, mm. Someone I spoke to started noticing moisture condensation on their walls inside their home which they had mm. never, ever experienced before because they were just in their home for, I don't know, eight to 10 hours a day. Mm. Yeah. It just completely changed during after the pandemic. 